Dettlinger. I'm from Eisenhower Army Medical Center in Fort Gordon, Georgia. And today I'm going to be presenting two cases which kind of demonstrate the importance of the inferior epigastric artery uh, in terms of complications with a retroperitoneal bleed, in addition to a novel approach to management of that bleeding. So the presentation will proceed first with review of the two cases, followed by looking at what are the risk factors for laceration and bleeding from the inferior epigastric artery. Subsequently, I'll be looking at some management strategies in addition to the one that we utilized, and finally some concluding thoughts. So our first case was a 63-year-old woman. She presented to our emergency department with chest pain. She had no ischemic changes on her EKGs. However, she had a mild elevation in troponin. Thus, she was given full-dose aspirin along with a loading dose of clopidogrel, therapeutic anoxaparin, and eptifibotide. Um, the cat failed to reveal any culprit lesions. Um, she was closed using an angio seal closure device and transferred back to the floor. Approximately one hour after her catheterization, she developed significant right lower quadrant pain along with some hypotension. She was subsequently resuscitated with fluids and blood she, and became stable hemodynamically. She was noted to have a drop in her hemoglobin and a CT scan was obtained. As you can see here, there's uh, obviously a retroperitoneal bleed with uh, extension into the anterior abdominal wall. Subsequently, she was then taken to the catheterization lab again and access was obtained on the left side. Using a 45 centimeter destination a sheath, they did an iliofemoral angiography and subsequently used a JR4 catheter to actively engage the inferior epigastric. And as you can see here, there's active extravasation of contrast from that inferior epigastric. Upon seeing this, they deployed three tornado microcoils, which five minutes later then showed uh, active, or er, excuse me, clear uh, hemostasis. In follow up one month and then one year later, the patient was doing well without any significant consequence. The second case is a 71-year-old man who underwent a cardiac catheterization for new onset heart failure. Um, he didn't receive any antiplatelet therapy nor any anticoagulation before the procedure. Uh, no significant or obstructive coronary artery disease was noted on his cath, and they used hemo or just manual compression to achieve hemostasis after the cath. Three days later, the patient presented to the emergency department with a complaint of abdominal and back pain. There was a noted drop in his hemoglobin, and so again, a CT scan was obtained. And as you can see here, once again, there's a demonstration of a retroperitoneal bleed. This patient was also initially managed conservatively with just manual compression and the placement of a fem stop overnight. The following morning, an ultrasound was obtained, which did show a 